Hello and welcome back. This is Dawn. In today's video, we're going to be creating this ink blended beauty. Now we're going to be using some new products along with some old products. And I'm going to show you how to do this ink blended detail to get these gorgeous results. Now the main products that I'm using in today's card is the new 3D embossing folder clover petals. I love the pattern here. It kind of reminds me of a tile. I'm also going to be using the Lovely Layers Strawberries. Now this creates these beautiful strawberry arrangements along with the leaves and the flowers. And they also have some pottery that you can put these into or you could even use uh, some of the older containers. But I'm gonna be using them as accents for this card and the star is really gonna be this teapot and cup die set. But first I'm gonna start with my ink blending and I'm gonna use the Lovely Layers Strawberry set like I mentioned. I'm gonna pull off all the dies that I think I'm going to need and I may pull more just so that I have options, but I'm gonna die cut these from white cardstock. Now you could definitely start with a colored cardstock like a light pink and then blend your reds into it. However, strawberries when they're not ripe, they're kind of a whitish greenish color. So I wanted to be able to include some of that color variation. So starting with white gives me complete control. I'm going to tape those in place so they don't jump around and then I'm going to run that through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 and I'm going to cut, like I said, more than I think I'll need. This way I have options. And now we can start our ink blending. I'm going to zoom in close here so you can really see what's going on. But I've got all of my die cuts here and I'm going to use a My Sweet Petunia sticky mat to hold my dies in place while I ink blend. Now so that I don't get ink all over my pad like I did before. I'm going to use the negative from our die cuts to drop my dies back into. Now I'll still get some ink on the outside edges there if I'm not careful, but this will keep the remainder of the mat pretty clean and free of ink. I'm going to be using Concord and Ninth inks today and I'm using Cranberry, Poppy, and Stardust for my strawberries. Stardust is a perfect yellowy green color that captures those unripe uh, or starting to ripen strawberries perfectly. And the Rabbit Hole Designs Bitty Blender Brushes are the perfect size to work with this detailed ink blending. So I'm starting with that Stardust and I'm just putting a light layer across the center of the strawberry. And then I'm going to come in from the edges and using that poppy, I'm going to start blending in around the perimeter of the berry. You'll notice that after I ink up my brush, I am tapping it sometimes onto my craft mat. And that's just to knock off the bulk of the ink. I don't want to go too heavy too fast. I can always add more ink, but I can't take it away. And you know, if you do, it's not a big deal. Make that berry more ripe. <laughs> it's your project. Do what you want. But for demonstration purposes, I wanted to show you how you can not only control where you're putting the ink, but how much you're putting down by just knocking off some of that excess ink and then coming to your paper to blend. Don't worry about a perfect blend. Nothing in nature is perfect. The strawberries, as they start to ripen, they have a variation of color on them, so it's going to look organic and natural. Now I'm going to come in with some of that cranberry, and I'm going to just hit a little bit harder, a little bit deeper in color on those uh, outer, outer edges. And again, I'm leaving that center bright. I want to create a rounded 3D effect and having that lighter color in the center and having it graduate into a darker color around the edges is going to give us that rounded effect. So that looks pretty good. My one last thing I'm gonna do, two last things. I'm gonna hit the edges of those dies with that uh, cranberry. And again, that's just gonna further push those edges to the back. And then I'm gonna come in with a little bit more stardust just to brighten up that center with that uh, yellowy green color and to blend it more seamlessly. Don't freak out and worry too much about your light direction and which area is highlighted. I don't know my final uh, layout here yet, my final composition, so I'm just going to vary where I put my highlights. I'm gonna leave some of times the very center light, sometimes I'm gonna leave an edge lighter. It's not gonna matter. Nobody's gonna look at your card and say your light source is wrong. <laughs> Just have fun with it and experiment. Now for the smaller berry, I'm going to make this one even less ripe. So I'm gonna add more of the stardust, cover more of the strawberry with the stardust, and then just add in a little bit of the red. This is gonna make that berry look like it is just starting to ripen. And again, here you can see why starting with the white paper is to our advantage because we can control 
how how much color we're putting on and we can control what stage of ripeness the strawberry is. I'm going to repeat this with all of my strawberries and like I said sometimes I'm going to vary where I put the highlight and I'm going to vary where I put the green. Here I'm putting it on one of the edges and then I will come in with that red and fill in around it. And then once we're done with all of our strawberries, we can come in and put any final touches on them that we want to. So we've got a good idea. We did our first round of inking and now I'm gonna come in with that cranberry and I'm just going to deepen up some areas. Again, it's not gonna do it uniformly or the same on every strawberry. I'm gonna put a little bit of depth there where the what would have been the calyx of the flower uh, that little green part that sits on top. I'll deepen that up a little bit, maybe deepen up a little edge, deepen up the bottom there. I'm just further reinforcing that three-dimensional look by adding in some deep darks. And then we'll just repeat this for the rest of the strawberries. Again, have fun with it. Play around with the different areas of depth and darkness. Uh, the way our arrangement's gonna end up in the end, our strawberries are facing all different directions. So it's going to look more organic and more natural if our very if our shadows and our highlights are a little varied. And once we're done with our strawberries, we're going to move on to all of the greenery for this set. Now, one of the great things about this particular set is they've provided a base image for some of the strawberries that are still on the stem. And then that cluster of strawberries, there's a base image that you then adhere all of the strawberries on top of. And this is great because it gives you a solid foundation to adhere some of those smaller fiddly bits on top of. Again, since some of these are smaller and fiddly and because uh, they are mostly green, the layers that you're going to see after you adhere everything on top are going to be green, we're gonna take a little shortcut here and we're gonna cut this from some sprout cardstock. This gives us a good base green and then we can just add some variation using a green ink. Now for these littler uh, caps to the strawberries here, you'll notice that I'm not using it inside the little template there. That's because I wanna be able to use the very side of this bitty blender brush. You see here I'm tilting it on my side and I'm just using the very edge of the brush to come in between each of these little uh, leaf segments. This is gonna create movement and depth to the top of that area and make it look like each one of those little um, segments are separated and they have a little shadow between them. Again, I'm using the very edge of that uh, flat rounded brush. So if you turn it on its side, you get almost a straight edge. You can see there I took almost all the ink off my brush and then just lightly blended over the entire thing to blend all that together. And this is going to live right on top of the strawberry. I'll use some liquid adhesive to adhere that into place. And then that strawberry is pretty much done. I'll repeat this with all of the remaining strawberries. And now it's time to tackle the base here for that cluster of strawberries. Now, I do not wanna cover up all of the light green, but the goal here is to create some variations in the green color, just to create some variations of depth. Uh, right now it's very flat, all one color, that light green, and we need it to match our strawberries that we have uh, ink blended. So I'm going to come in with some darker green. This is the parsley, and I'm going to add some shadows just again to add some variation in color. You do not have to go crazy trying to get all of your shadows in exactly the right spot. As long as you have some areas of brighter, lighter green and some areas of darker green, once you add everything on top, it's all going to look very cohesive. And this, again, will just help marry that base image and the elements that you do see with our ink blended strawberries. And you can see here that my blending is not uh, the most finessed. It's a bit rough. But when we adhere all of these pieces on top, you're only going to see little portions of it. And again, it's going to look very cohesive and absolutely adorable. <laughs> I love this little image, it's so sweet. What I like to do is after I've adhered the strawberries, and this is completely optional, but since we're adhering that red strawberry onto a green base, I'll take the red ink 
and just ink around the edges of the strawberry to marry that green with that red. Just helps disguise it. Red is the opposite color of green. So when you layer this red over that green, it definitely um, dulls that green, knocks it back, and it's not as bright and obvious under there. So you can see here how all of these just layer right on top, and this is really starting to come together and starting to look very three-dimensional. For the flowers, I'm just using what's left of that stardust on my brush to just brush a little color on these flowers that I've cut from white cardstock. They are supposed to be white flowers, but I didn't want them so stark and cleanly white that they looked odd with the rest of the composition. So again, a light dusting of color will just help knock that bright white back just a bit. I'll just add the flower centers, which the die cut is included for. I've cut these from Buttercup, and now we can start on the leaves. And just like for the base of that cluster of strawberries, we're going to start with colored cardstock. Here I've cut it from parsley, and then I'm going to come in and add a little bit of detail using the same color parsley ink. I don't want a huge variation of color on these. I'm going to use the edge of that brush again here to separate some of the stems here. So I'm just using that to knock one of the stems to the background by darkening it up a little bit. And you can see here now it looks like two stems are crossing over each other. And then I'm going to add a little bit of depth to the edges of the leaves and then some of the little um, serrated edges so it looks a little fluted. Again, you can do as much or as little as you want here. You just want to add some variation in color so that it will match the strawberries. You don't want these leaves to be solid, flat, all one color because it will look odd when you place them on top of each other. But you don't have to go crazy either. A lot of this you won't see. It'll be hidden behind the teapot and stuff. So don't stress if it's not perfect. When it all comes together, it will all look cohesive, I promise. And here's a look at that finished. You can see here it just adds a little depth and a little movement to those leaves. And like I promised, when you layer these together, they now look like they belong together. See how pretty that is? Oh, so cute. Okay, and now it is time to tackle our teapot. Now I have die cut this from some light blue, I believe this is Aqua Sky cardstock, and this die has debossed uh, lines in it, creating this checkered pattern. Now I want the debossed lines to be darker and the rest of the pot to be lighter. So the easiest way to achieve this is to take a brayer and some white pigment ink and we're going to brayer over the top of this die cut. Now what that's going to do is it's going to apply the white pigment ink to all the high points of this die cut and it's going to leave the debossed lines darker. And again, you have complete control over this. You can make this as light or as, or as bright as you want. Um, if you want to add more layers of ink, just dry the first layer, either allow it to air dry or use your heat tool, and then apply another layer of ink. The more layers of this white ink you have, the lighter your pot's going to be. And the more contrast you're going to have between the pot and the debossed lines. I still want my pot to read as a very light turquoise, so I'm going to stop with one layer. Once I'm done, I'm going to heat set this with my heat tool, and that's because we're going to come in and we're going to do some ink blending, and I don't want to uh, just move that white ink around. I want it to be dry. Now we can't leave this flat because we want it to match with the rest of the elements. We want it to match our strawberries. So we're going to add a little bit of shading just to bring some dimension to this. I'm taking that aqua sky and I'm going to start building in my shadows. This is a rounded teapot. So we're going to create some depth by adding a little bit of darker color around the perimeter of the teapot and anywhere that two elements would meet and push things back into the shadows. So for example, the base of the teapot is going to be darker. It's going to be even darker than the edges of the teapot. So we'll want to deepen that up. But for the first layer, I just want to create that gradual um, 3D effect. So I'm going to come through and do all of my edges, and then I'm going to come in with a little bit of a darker color. We're going to use the Ocean Drive, and we're going to deepen that up. Again, you'll notice that I'm using the edge of that blending brush to create more of a straight line there at the bottom to push the base of that pot back into shadow. And now I'm going to hit with the Ocean Drive anywhere I want those deepest, darkest shadows. We've already got a pretty good 3D effect going, but again, we want to really push some of those areas back into the recesses. So here where the handle and the pot meet, and then at the top where the pot is open would be a lot darker. 
and then again at that base. So it's just a gradual back and forth of deepening up the color in the right spots to create this nice rounded 3D effect. Now, if you feel like your color isn't deepening up and it feels like you're just kind of going over the same thing, it might be because you have too much ink on the paper and it's all wet, so they're just blending together instead of layering. Put it aside and let it dry and then come back and add another layer in certain spots if you need to. Okay, so now it is time to put together our little vignette, if you will. I love creating arrangements. I love ink blending. I love all of the fiddly bits. Um, I have Netflix going in the background when I'm doing this and I am in my happy spot. This is, this is a fun Friday night for me. <laughs> That's kind of sad, isn't it? No, it's not. Whatever brings you joy. Whatever brings you joy is what you should do. And this brings me joy. Okay, so when I'm creating arrangements, I do keep the visual triangle in mind. So you can see here, I've got the strawberries in the background. I've tilted them to the left. I've got our teapot in front of them with our teacup. Now we've got the red and white going in the upper left hand corner. So I've brought some red and white into the lower right hand corner. And then I'm also going to add a little red and white to the left hand corner. Again, you can see here, I've, I need that extra little white flower there. So I'm just gonna build that on the fly. This is why it's good to cut more than you think you'll need. Because if you need to add a little something extra, you've already got the pieces cut. I can tuck that back in and now I have a good visual triangle. I've got red, 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 white, white, white. So I'm repeating the elements, working in a visual triangle, and I'm also working in threes. Now I do ultimately end up changing this arrangement, but I left this in because it is definitely a strong composition and one you could use. We're gonna use the press and seal trick to um, pick up this arrangement. Once you've got it where you want it, no reason to have to redo it. So I just take a bit of press and seal, lay that over my arrangement, make sure that the press and seal comes into contact with all of the elements, and then I can just pick this up as one whole unit and put it off to the side while we work on the background. And for that, we're gonna be using this 3D embossing folder, the Clover Petals embossing folder. This is beautiful. It reminds me of like Mediterranean tiles or something. So we're really gonna play on that and add some color to really bring out that pattern. In a very subtle way though, we don't want to compete with that foreground. I'm misting my cardstock on the front and the back, and then I'm just gonna run this through my die cutting machine using the proper sandwich. Now I'm doing this on a light gray cardstock and here you can see how beautiful that detail is. I've got a great embossed impression, but I wanna bring that out a little bit. So again, I'm gonna use that brayer and I'm brayering some pumice stone over the top. Again, this will hit those high points and bring out some of that pattern. And because we're working on gray cardstock, we can come in and add a little bit of white to that as well, just to give it even more distressing and add a little more interest. Now this will lighten it up a little bit. So if you prefer to keep it darker, then skip this step. And now it's time to adhere everything down. I've got my card panel here. I'm gonna tape that to my work surface using a little washi tape. And now I can lay that whole arrangement over top of that background panel get it exactly where I want it, and then I will press that press and steel to the table on one side. This will create a hinge that I can flip back and forth. And here's where I changed the arrangement. I was originally going to put my sentiment in the upper right, but I decided to put it in the lower right instead. So I felt like this arrangement helped the eye to travel around the card in a circle here and land on the sentiment. So this I felt just worked better for where I wanted my sentiment placement. To adhere, I'm gonna be using several different adhesives. I've got some um, foam tape here in two different heights, and then I've got some liquid adhesive, and of course I've got my tweezers. I've always got my reverse tweezers, you guys. I'm going to adhere the back layers flat. So these back leaves, I'm gonna do them flat, and then the leaf that sticks up out from behind, I'm going to put a little bit of a lower profile foam tape. This is the white foam strips from Honeybee Stamps. So that's gonna make that one pop up from behind. Once those are adhered, I can pull back the press and seal, and everything that's not adhered will come with it. I'm gonna double check and make sure that anything that is not adhered securely, I'll just add a little extra adhesive to it and we can start on our next layer. I like to go with the lower profile uh, foam tape first and then the upper layers I will adhere with a higher profile. Anything that is going to be behind another element, I will adhere directly to the card base using some liquid adhesive and anything that stands out from behind, I can pop up. 
I also flip this back and forth uh, several times just to double check where things will land. I don't want to put foam adhesive on something that's going to um, land on top of another element and be uneven. So I, f I do flip it back and forth just to make sure that um, nothing is overlapping where the foam adhesive won't allow it to adhere, you know, flat or level. And then you'll notice it a lot here on the teapot. I'm going to be adding some foam adhesive, but I'm only going to add foam adhesive to the areas where it needs to be leveled. So where it's overlapping some of the other areas, it's going to be laying on top of a layer of foam tape. So I don't really need to put foam tape there. I'd put liquid adhesive there or nothing at all. As long as it's stable, um, you really, you won't need anything under it. So you can see I flip back and forth and I kind of run my fingers over the teapot to see if there's any areas that are sinking. And then I'll add adhesive in those spots. So I'll just continue on with each level of elements here varying up where I use my foam tape and where I use my liquid adhesive, making sure that everything is level and stable. Okay, so now that the main part of this is adhered, I can come in and tuck any little extras. Originally, I was going to put this little flower behind the teacup, but I decided that I wanted it to uh, be in front, so ultimately that's where I adhered it, and I can tuck in any extra berries if I want to. So here, one of those berries got covered up, so I decided to add in another strawberry. And I think that this uh, helped, again, have the eye travel around the card. Okay, for the sentiments, I wasn't quite sure which one I wanted to use, so I pulled two sets here. I pulled uh, Squeeze the Day and My Favorite Flower. I wasn't sure, I still wasn't married to putting the sentiment in the lower left-hand corner, so I'm gonna go ahead and stamp and heat emboss both of these and use their accompanying die cuts and then I will make my decision. So I've stamped them both in uh, Be Creative embossing ink onto poppy cardstock and I've covered them with Wow Bright White embossing powder and now I'm just melting that. Then I will use the dies to die cut them out and now I have a better idea and I can choose which sentiment I want and exactly where I want to place it. And honestly, either of these would look great. Um, I actually really like this one too. I had, I did, I had a hard time deciding, but eventually I chose to go with the You Make My Heart Blossom in the lower right hand corner. With that adhered, I added a few more details. I added the leaves there on the left side and then a little tea bag in the cup. And then I'm gonna trim off any excess that's hanging over the edges and then adhere this to a standard A2 white card base. I really love how this turned out and I hope you do too. Hopefully you picked up some tips and tricks that you can incorporate into your craft process. Remember, if you're looking for any of the supplies for this card, you can find them in the video description below. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.